role does trusting your instincts play and taking risks in your life? Well, taking risks has a huge role in my life. It, it always has and it will continue to. Confidence is something that I have grown to acquire. It's certainly not something that I've always had. And there's the phrase, fake it till you make it. And I did a lot of that. I mean, it, just as an example, I, I taught for 29 years. And the first semester that I taught, I was absolutely paralyzed. I would throw up in the school's parking lot. I, I was a wreck. I was a mess. But I couldn't let my students know that. And I gradually worked through that. Um, but risk taking is so critically important because if we, if we stagnate, if we just accept the status quo and, and we're entrenched in it, we don't go anywhere. We don't move the needle forward. And, the, and what is challenging about risk taking is that it's just that, it's a risk. We don't know whether we're going to succeed or fail. You have to do it. We, you have, you to, have do to do it. it. Yeah. Now, Sophia used to be a hitchhiker. She was a dumpster diver. <laughs> and a shoplifter in her previous life. Why aren't you in jail? I, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know. I have I've like a... But like, what happened <laughs> to turn you around? Um, so, okay. I was, I was like a teenager who was really like anti-capitalist, and I thought that if I stole from like really big retailers that I wasn't stealing from people, and I convinced myself of all kinds of things, and it's amazing what you can find behind a grocery store, because like one bottle of olive oil will crack, and then the labels of all this other amazing olive oil is saturated, and they'll have to throw out all of it, because who's going to buy an ugly label on like a beautiful bottle of olive oil? Anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, so what turned you around to get so you to where you the are The first today? thing I sold online, I'm not proud of this, but it was stolen. And so I think there was a part of me that never really was made to fit into whatever construct I was, you know, told was, was next for me. Um, I was very angry at having grown up in the suburbs. And I, it was maybe misdirected entrepreneurship. Um, but what I did learn is that there are no shortcuts, and that it really, really does kind of come back to you if you do take shortcuts. It does not work. It's not sustainable. And I'm, most of us don't have to learn that the hard way. Um, but I did, and I did it early, and I got it out of the way. Out of your system. Yeah. Great. You hear that, women? No shortcuts. It's true. Tim, tell us about your book. What is the main focus? What message do you want to convey to these women about success and perseverance? Well, my book, The Natty Professor, is about my 29 years as an educator and my 14 seasons, well, actually 13 at the time I wrote the book, 13 seasons of mentoring on Project Runway. And I take the word teach and turn it into an acronym. T is for truth telling. E is for empathy, which I think is critical when you're interacting with people. A is for asking. I never make any assumptions. I pummel people with questions. I have a very Socratic approach to everything. C is for cheerleading. And H is for hoping for the best or let it go and stand back and let that young person or whomever it is fly. There you go. Now we're coming up on the new year. What's on the calendar for you two for 2016? What do you have planned and what would you dream, what would you dream that you would want to accomplish? Um, for me, it's connecting the success of Girl Boss as a book to the success of Nasty Gal as a brand, because in a lot of ways they were built separately. The Girl Boss story is, this, is very much the story of building Nasty Gal, but it kind of sits on its own, and there's a Girl Boss, there's, there's an intersection of those, the reader and the customer. But I think there are, there are no brands out there for the millennial girl that really mean a lot and can dress you well. I mean, I know I look like Elvis today, but <laughs> I just pulled the closest sample off, a, off the rack of the office. Elvis should have been lucky to look this good. <laughs> That's right. There Elvis, are too I'm many glad you didn't pull have... off this jumpsuit. It looks like yeah. um, but it's about, it's about connecting the dots. So I like building new things, and I'm starting new things. There's collaborations we have in the pipe. I'm working on the second book, Nasty Galaxy. We have Girl Boss Radio, um, which you can find on iTunes. But what are all these things, and how do they make something that's greater than the sum of their parts? That requires a type of thinking that's really different from the type of thinking that is like, hey, I have this idea. I'm just going to go. It's so strategic and takes so much planning and so many other 
people with different skill sets to make that happen. And ultimately, you know, we would like to be something like the red, like a Red Bull, or I mean, just beyond like a beverage or beyond fashion. I think Nasty has that opportunity, and you know how you do that. It's mm -hmm. the future will tell. But, Good. Yeah. What's up for you next year? Marion, I'm going to invoke the H from my TEACH acronym. For 2016, I'm simply hoping for the best, <laughs> whatever that may be. Well, I think that happens to a lot of people. However, a lot of us also plan. Now, you mentioned mentoring, almost in passing. What are your thoughts about mentoring? What are your approaches? And why do you think it's important for a lot of people to have a mentor? So Sophia. Um, I think mentorship, you know, it's like I've become, I've been nominated as a mentor in a lot of ways. I didn't write, I mean, I did put myself on the cover of a book, like doing this or whatever, but I did not anticipate it to be, to be the success that it was. And so, um, I think it's really, it's, it's interesting to be in that position and it makes me realize that my story is just one of many stories. Mentorship is stories in all directions. So I interview women on this podcast and I meet girls who are applying to the Girl Boss Foundation and who I meet just through everyday life who are doing really interesting things at different levels of whatever you want to call success. And I think that's really fascinating. And again, my, I'm, my story is great, but at a certain point you want to, you, I want to harness the stories of these other girls and create mentorships among women. And I can only be one of them. So I think there's a, there's, there's, and I think this is an example of that. This conference is an example of that, but I think there needs to be more of that. Mentorship is also something that I think is this kind of like dream thing, this term, and people are kind of waiting to be discovered by a mentor or they're looking for their mentor and life's not going to start until I have my mentor. And it's a nice thing to have, but at the end of the day, you have to be your own mentor. I mean, I got on YouTube and watched videos of people giving advice to other people and I like, you know, that was my mentorship right. when I was starting my Not business. A live one. So you can seek it out for yourself, but there's, you know, it's like if you're going to let time pass because you're waiting for a mentor, then you should probably just start figuring something else out. Figure it out yourself. Tim, what do you think? Well, I want to want to use what Sophia just said as a point of departure because as a as a mentor and to less of a degree as a teacher, but particularly as a mentor, I would say to my mentees, I can't want you to succeed more than you do. Because in so many cases, they it's, it would expect me to take them to that level that they um, aspire to. No, 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 no. You have to, you are responsible for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I came to being a mentor with a misnomer, which was that it's very much like teaching. And while there are lots of similarities, there are some pronounced differences, the most significant of which is a mentor should not tell individuals what to do. A mentor should probe with questions, should turn the mentee's questions back on the mentee. Well, what do you think about this? Um, and, and really engage in a dialogue and make certain that the person you're mentoring accepts responsibilities for any decisions that are made about the project. Mm -hmm. Very critical. And as a teacher, I could say to my students, I insist you do the following. I would never do that to someone I'm mentoring. Prescriptive, yes. We're not going to have time for questions from the audience, and so I'll just ask a few on your behalf. <laughs> Tim, I understand you have a picture of Oprah in your bedroom. I do. Tell me about that. And he'll want to know how I knew that. He yeah. has a spare bedroom, too, so I just peeked around the corner. <laughs> Marianne, how do you know that? I know everything, Tim. <laughs> well, if, if any of you have your picture taken with Oprah, would you not have it on your bedside table? <laughs> um, I was on, I'm happy and proud to say that I was on her show a number of times, and with each appearance, there is an official photo session, and only her official photographer is allowed to take that photo, and it can't be reproduced. Um, it can be published in a photo of your room, um, but not, not as a separate entity. And I'm proud to have it, and I actually have several, and I rotate them. <laughs> it's interesting, though. I keep getting older. Oprah looks younger. <laughs> We would the agree. Photographer. Yeah, we would agree. <laughs> this is going to be kind of a lightning round, and uh -oh. I'm going to ask a question. Just give me your first answer. Oh. Okay? Oh, dear. Here we go. This, this scares is, me. This is good. Okay. I'm terrified. What is the one thing every woman here should do, quote, to secure a better future? What's the one thing? Oh, my God. Rely on yourself. Okay. Stop wearing leggings as pants. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! 
<laughs> it's true. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> It's pretty early. I think there's probably a lot of leggings as pants out here. <laughs> it needs to stop. <laughs> a lot of women work hard. They want to move from here to there, and it just doesn't happen. Give them one piece of advice to help them move from here to there. Sophia. Oh, my God. Do I have to be first every time? <laughs> okay, Tim, so go. Tim, are you ready? I, I will just say be tenacious. Don't be, tenacious. be deterred. Don't be... Um, derailed, be tenacious, and that tenacity will pay off. It's the, yeah, the same. Do all you can with, what you, with all that you have and connect dots that no one else is going to connect for you. Right. Be the person who says, hey, what's, what's that doing there? And pick it up and say, like, cool, I'm going to do something with this. Okay. Um, be comfortable having radical ideas and having, you know, that, that it could be that someone could look at you and say, like, you're insane, or that's the best thing I've ever fucking heard. Mm -hmm. um, there you are. Yeah. And Mary that's risk-taking. I love this. The former teacher is raising his hand to be recognized. <laughs> I, I like to ask permission. Tim. May I just add also, in my own experience, whenever I thought things couldn't get any darker and bleaker, right. There was a ray of sunshine, and things changed. But it took getting to that point and being tenacious and not giving up. Mm -hmm. it, you have to be a weeble. If you're knocked over, you have to bounce right back up. Right. Every woman here has a brand. When you're not in the room, people are talking about you. Either they're saying, she's very precise. She's always on time. She makes a great presentation in the boardroom. She is well organized, gets along well with coworkers. What is your brand? What do people say when you're not in the room? Talk to these business leaders about having an exquisite brand. What's your brand? I would say my brand is one for the girl who has a digital camera and a laptop and maybe an idea and is looking for someone to give them guidance on what to do next because there's a lot of women speaking to women who have incredible degrees and incredible pedigrees and I really admire them um, and you know have shared stages with them but there's the rest of us who are who are struggling to find what it is that is ours and through trial and error and through making stupid mistakes and you know selling stolen shit online or hopefully not um, we find our way, and so I think my brand is one of permission to uh, discover yourself. Outstanding. Tim, brand. Marion, I want to quote a teacher I met at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. She was leading 30 of her students around the museum, and she saw me, and she said, stop, I want my students to meet you. And she said, students, this man is a testament to good posture. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brand. Okay, you heard it here, folks. Good posture, <laughs> taking risks, perseverance, and having hope in the face of adversity. Yes. And so we're down to 10 seconds, and I want to say this has been an amazing exchange from two bright lights in our nation who are doing amazing things. It is the prelude to the amazing things that each one of you will be doing in the new year. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.